Hey guys, welcome back to Madhouse. I'm Marcus Davis here, and uh, I missed you guys. Um, actually, I took a week off, uh, just trying to get back to normal with with uh, the whole quarantine situation. Just trying to get into the rhythm of life again and starting to turn back a little bit more back to normal. So with that, I've been getting back to work, but I haven't forgot about you guys. Um, and um, I wanted to actually share with you why I started this to begin with. And the truth is, I started this to begin with because of quarantine. And I felt like uh, there might be some of those of you out there that are trying to find the best way to maximize your time. And I wanted to contribute by just sharing some information with you that you could apply at home in your home studios and maybe pick up a new trade. Um, but now that we're slowly starting to go back to, to work and get back to norm, I'm not sure if I should continue these or not, or if so, what it is you would like to learn or what it is you'd like to see from me, whether that be product reviews, whether that be possibly, you know, more tutorials, um, specific tutorials on certain things, whether that be production, mixing, uh, vocals. So uh, really, I'm going to leave it up to you to uh, comment in the comment section. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know um, if you think I might be able to help you with that. Um, put it in the comments and I'll be very transparent with you. I'll say, yes, I can help you with that. Or, you know, let me go do some research. But I would love to keep these going. I'd love to build a community around, um, you know, audio production in general. And um, yeah, even for those of you out there that are narrators and voice talents that are setting up home studios at home and want to get into, you know, just recording yourself uh, reading books or whatever, um, I actually run a company where that is exactly what we do. We do post-production for audiobooks. So I have a wealth of understanding around, you know, cleaning out room tone, um, you know, mixing and mastering for that industry. So yeah, any of the, all of the above, feel free to leave comments below and we can continue to do these. In the meantime, I want to share with you a new uh, tool that I've been using a lot lately. Uh, it's the MPC here. I have the MPC studio here. And the last time I did my studio tour, I didn't really get a chance to show you guys um, just what all that can do. Um, and partly because it's taken me a while to kind of integrate it into my studio. It comes with its own software. It comes with its own um, you know, sequencer. And if you're, you know, I've been so familiar with Logic that, you know, I was kind of struggling to move into working with NPCs, uh, you know, sequencer. But once I did, I fell in love with it. Um, it's an integral part of my production process. Um, and I want to take you through, this won't be a tutorial per se, because I know some of you may not even, you know, have this unit, but this will be just a demonstration of what I love about it. And it might, you know, encourage you to, to look into getting one. I know they just came out with, uh, I think it's the MPC-1 or something like that, but it's all using the same software and the same sequencer. This is a little older model, but it, I just absolutely love it. And I'll take you through why. And yeah, we'll do that today. And then if something comes up, in the future that you'd like me to share with you about any of the stuff here or any of the skill sets that I may possess. Like I said, put it in the comments, let me know, and uh, I'll read through the comments and see what I feel like I could uh, offer to the community. All right, so let's dive in. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna take you guys through uh, one of my favorite pieces of gear, and I'll be honest with you, it wasn't always my favorite piece of gear. Um, I kind of resisted going down the NPC world, partly because I got so comfortable with working in the DAW. And when I switched over to using the NPC, I had to learn their software as well. And, you know, I kind of was drug unwillingly at first, but eventually I fell in love with it. Um, thank you, Scott Pearson, for turning me on to the NPC and encouraging me to, you know, dive into it a little further. Um, after diving into it further, um, I really love this thing and there's just there's a few things I really love about it and there's a few things that I could do without and so I'll kind of walk you through some of the things I love and how I'm working with it uh, in logic because I think that's key um, this has its own standalone software I personally don't use it that way um, I still like to get everything ultimately inside of logic so with that let me take you through some of the things I love first off one of my favorite features um, about the NPC is being able to make custom kits. So I'm able to uh, use Splice and, and, and some of my old libraries and I'm able to easily drag those kits right onto these pads. And by dragging them onto the pads, I can then color assign them so that I can you know easily see. So you'll notice inside the software, they're color coded as well as 
on the actual hardware itself. It's color coded. So I can start storing, logging my own special kits, everything from samples that aren't drums to stuff that are drums and everything in between. Also, uh, keyboard patches as well. You can also create your own keyboard patches that you would be able to hook up a MIDI keyboard and then play along with them. Um, and so being able to make my own custom kits is important um, just so that when I get ready to get in here and work, I can just load up a kit real quick and go right to work and not have to like sift through a bunch of sounds like I've done in the past. So making custom kits, having them stored in the NPC software, being able to recall them quickly is A plus in my opinion. So that's one thing I love about it. The other thing that I really love about the NPC is you're, you have to work within its software, which like I said was a little awkward for me at first, but its software allows you to do some things that are um, hard to do in Logic. And so once you kind of get around working in its software, there, uh, there are some things that speed up your workflow. For instance, the 16 level um, button. The 16 level button, what it does is it allows you to take any, any uh, sound that's been on any of these 16 pads and it allows you to take that sound and spread it out across the 16 pads. So for instance, let's find a sound. That guitar sound. I'm gonna now spread that across all 16 pads by just hitting the 16 level button. Now what's happened is I can play that on all 16 pads and I can tell those 16 pads how I want them to act. So in this case, they're acting, they're, they're changing the tune of those 16. So as I move up the 16 pads, the tuning is moving up too. Um, I can tell them, oh, you know, let's do velocity instead of um, tuning. So now, as I move up the 16 pads, the velocity gets louder. Where that comes in handy um, is, for instance, let's say I'm, I'm you know, working on a hi-hat pattern. Let's find a hi-hat. Well, let's use this. Okay. So I'm going to assign this to the, all 16 pads. And now that it's assigned to all 16 pads, what I can do is I can say, okay, um, I can add my accents as I want. So... Right, I can I can hit the ones that I want to be louder. So it gives me a little bit more control over the velocity. If I want to ramp up a sound, I can go right and get louder as I move. Um, if I want to change the pitch of the sound, so in this case we'll move it to pitch. I'm working with the hi hat. Right, I'm sure you can see how. How cool that can be in the context of working with a production. Um, very powerful, very easy to do in the MPC, not so easy to do in Logic on the fly. So I love that and I'll make a beat and I'll show you how I incorporate that. Um, another thing that I love is I love the, um, the note repeat. Um, so while we're in 16 levels here uh, on this sound, I can hold down the note repeat button and I can have it repeat based on how I tell it. So right now it's repeating at 16th notes. If I wanted to go up to 30 seconds, 60 fourths, right? So I'm sure you, you, you guys are familiar with all the stuff that's happening in trap music, um, with all the fast 16ths and triplets and, and 30 seconds. This just makes it real easy to do that. So I can be playing a pattern and at any point I can hold down the note repeat, right? So if I have it up to 30 seconds, Right, so that comes in handy with hi hats. That comes in handy with vocal chops. Um, it just makes it really easy to program that kind of stuff. And I'll show you. I'll demonstrate in just a minute. Um, another thing that I really love about the MPC is how easy and how quick it is to manipulate samples. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's get out of the 16 levels for a minute. Let's go find a sample. We can use that. So. I'm gonna use that sample and I'm gonna manipulate it on the fly. So an easy way to do that, I can go into my uh, program edit here and I'm gonna to go to sample and I'm gonna turn on the warp function. In this case, the warp function's already on. Now what the warp function allows me to do is I can transpose the sound without changing the length of the sound. So that comes in handy um, when I'm trying to get the sample to fit into a certain key. 
right? So it's not changing the length. It's not stretching it or shrinking it in order to, to, to pitch. And I can just turn on the warp function and it does that. Now let's just say I want to change the length, but I don't want to change the pitch. So I can also do that. I have a, once you're in the warp function screen, you have a stretch option. So I can take that sound, this running at that speed, and I can tell it I want to move much faster. But it's still staying on the same key and the same pitch. I can make it go much slower. And this is per pad, per sound. I can quickly turn on the warp function, um, change the tune, stretch the sample per pad real quick, real easy. And I can do this while my beat is playing and find that, that pocket that I want the groove to sit in. So I find that real slick. And what you'll notice too is I'm not working with the mouse. I'm not using the mouse at all. I'm doing a lot of stuff with my hands on the pads. And um, this is worth mentioning. I, I think it's, I think one of the things that I love most about the MPC is that I can actually put the software away. So I can close the software and I can work within this little screen and I can use it almost like a um, external gear, which uh, I like. I like the fact that I'm just, you know, focused on this little screen. I can, uh, I'm not having to learn a new software and all the ins and outs of that new software. I can kind of stay on this little screen, get to my sounds, warp sounds, sequence really quick, control the software, control logic, all from here, and it feels very outboard gear-ish, which influences the way we create. When you're working in the software you tend to, and you're working with a mouse, you tend to work a certain way than you would if you're working with uh, hardware. So this is one of the first controllers that I've bought, and I've bought a lot of controllers over the last 20 years, that actually feels like outboard gear. It, it, and I love that. I love that it, it, it just doesn't just feel like some pads that are controlling the software. It really feels like you're in this box. And, I, and sometimes it's nice to just be in this box. And I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm going to make a groove. And I'm going to do that groove with the screen, um, with, without the software on the screen being up. And I'm not even going to focus on the screen. I'm just going to focus on what's here in front of me. The only thing that I'm going to do on the screen here is I'm going to set the BPM. So I'm going to go set Logic's BPM to 96 for now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sequence a beat. Uh, let's hit record, play. So I've just laid down a snare. Um, that's on track one. I'm going to switch to track two. And notice I'm switching to track two without stopping the track. I'm going to take off overdub so I can audition the next sound I want to use. Okay. Record. It's right in. We're going to go to track three again. Not stopping the sequence. We're auditioning a new sound. Okay, let's go with it. Record. Next track. Auditioning. Don't need that. I like that. Let's go with that. Nice. Okay, so I've got a sequence building. I'm able to quickly trace a groove that I like. I can quantize. I can, you know, do all that fun stuff that every other sequencer can do and every other um, a drum machine can do. Now, assuming that I have something that I like, last but not least, my favorite thing about the um, software, the NPC software, is how I get what's inside of this sequence out of this sequence and inside of the um, uh, DAW. So it's easy to do. All I have to do, select a track. So I'll go to my track one here on the controller. And these buttons right here, one is an audio, one is for MIDI. 
and they allow me to quickly export that track and then drag that track into Logic. So uh, I can choose to drag it as MIDI or choose to drag it as audio. In this case, I'm gonna drag it as audio. So I'm on track one, so I'm just gonna hit this, it's gonna turn red, and then I can drag that right into my DAW, right? And because my, my uh, tempo is set to 96 here, and set to 96 in the NPC, everything's gonna line up perfectly, right? So now I'm gonna go to track two. I'm going to highlight that or uh, export that, drag it on in. I'm gonna go to track three, rinse and repeat, right? Drag it on in. And then I'm gonna go to track four the same thing. Now you can export these all at the same time, save them to a folder and then import them into Logic. But a lot of times, um, it's just, I find it quicker to just do this, just export them one at a time, drag them in. Once I got what I want, I turn the power off on the NPC so that it's not playing along with my Logic session anymore. And now what I have, if I hit play in Logic, I got my groove ready to go. I'll turn it down a bit. Yeah, so it's in there. Um, uh, I can arrange in Logic, like I can start copying, I can start moving stuff around, um, and I just find it so much quicker to arrange in Logic. So yeah, that's how I'm using the MPC. Um, it's a quick, easy way to just get some grooves, get them in the computer, and then you know, manipulate from there. Um, I know everybody, you know, has different levels of comfort when it comes to working with Logic versus working with NPC. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just me personally, I'm far more comfortable in the Logic software. So I love to get everything there. And that's ultimately where I do all the arranging, all the mixing, all the, the mastering, so on and so forth. For those of you who are on the fence about possibly, you know, getting something like the uh, MPC, this is the MPC Studio Black. There's also, I think they just came out with, uh, Akai just came out with uh, MP Studio, MPC Studio One, I think that's what it's called. Um, there's uh, Studio, there's Live, there's so many of them. Um, but they're all working off the same software for the most part. So they all kind of do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great addition to any studio. Um, it's a great sampler. And I think that's where its real strength is, is the ability to just mangle samples, samples quickly, get them in there quickly, mangle them quickly. There's so many different functions we haven't covered. Um, but yeah, on the surface, it's a great way to use it. Hopefully this has been helpful. And hopefully, uh, um, if you have any other questions about the MPC, just uh, feel free to reach out and uh, I can share the knowledge that I have about it or anything else that I have here. Feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to walk you through it. And yeah, you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, and let me know. Don't forget to, you know, comment and subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. But most importantly, comment about the things that you'd like to see more of. That'll really help me um, help you. You guys have a good one. Take care.